Oh man, the time has come, my friends. The time has come for me to officially do my first live Q&A between these two gimbals. We have the DJI Ronin S and the Juin Crane 2 gimbal. These two companies are the, honestly, they're head to head in the market right now. No other company uh, that makes single-handed gimbals is up to these two companies, all right? These guys are butting heads for the number one spot on the gimbal market. So I just received my DJI Ronin S actually two or three days ago, and I have my first professional gig with it tomorrow to do to start off my comparison video between the uh, Juin Crane 2 and the Ronin S. So I want to put the Ronin S through its paces. I'm going to take it to a fitness video shoot tomorrow I have in Woodland Hills. And I have two bodybuilders I'm going to be filming tomorrow. I'm going to be doing some creative shots with, the, you know, controlling the roll. I want to see if the 45 degree angled motor is really as big of a deal as people uh, claim it is. Um, I've had a 45 degree angled motor gimbal before and it was whatever. I mean, I never complained about not seeing the screen. So I wanted to take some time before I actually professionally use this gimbal on my first shoot tomorrow to go over some of the basic questions when it comes down to balancing, overall operation, and just my first impressions on this gimbal. I will be releasing my official first impressions video next Monday. Uh, I do need some time with the Ronin S in order for my thoughts to get processed and for me to have accurate thoughts and back it up with proof. So I will tell you that right now. Um, I did get a chance to balance my A9. I will go through that process with you in this video with the Ronin S. I want to show you how I balance it, how I rig it up, and uh, we'll do some whatever whatever this webcam allows us to see. I'm going to try and get as many close-ups as I can uh, while we do this. I'm shooting this with my webcam on my MacBook Pro. So whatever it can pick up, hopefully it will pick up good enough detail for you guys to understand what's going on. So here is the Ronin S, all right? If we take a close look, it's all metal, just like uh, the Juin Crane 2. It's the same exact materials, it feels like. The Ronin S is significantly heavier, and that mainly has to do with the main body of the gimbal. Actually, this knuckle right here, that's where a lot of the weight is going towards, and also the battery grip. Uh, the battery grip on its own does weigh a lot more than the batteries in the Juin Crane 2. And if you are a filmmaker like me, if you're like a one and gunner like me, weight is everything. So you want to keep as lightweight as possible. I'm not going to talk down on the Ronin S just yet. I need to put it through its paces. I need to take it on a professional gig with me first before I actually have any complaints about it or positive things about it. Uh, I do have, my back is very sensitive. My shoulder blade has a little bit of nerve damage on it. So from a from a car accident so it, weight does mean a lot and I know a lot of us don't have perfect backs so weight has a lot to do with everything uh, but then again I'm, I'm not saying any negative things about the Ronin S right now I need to put it through its paces first so let's answer some questions straight off the bat before we start like the balancing process and all that good stuff by the way guys I got a standing desk so right now I'm standing so this is great I have much more mobility and uh, this is going to be great for my new apartment that I'm getting soon. So I'm very excited. All right, let's answer some questions. Um, Eric Garcia says, hi, Joss. Uh, Halvin Wolf, what's up? I love your emoji. Uh, Soldier Edit says, have you taken a look at Parker's video that released? It's a great review. Can't wait for this man. Um, yes, I did take a look at Parker's video. He did a very good job. Um, yeah, I, I like what Parker's doing. Uh, but uh, just wait until what I release um, because I try to be – because camera motion is probably my, you know, what I'm really passionate about. I love camera motion. So sliders, dollies, jibs, cranes, whatever, gimbals, I mean, drones, anything that makes a camera move, that's what I think I'm very good at. And uh, gimbals is just one of those things where I just have a really close connection. So when I release my first impressions video – that's actually going to give you uh, a really close look at what the DJI Ronin S is all about. It's not going to be a review video because 
if I release just a review video on the Ronin S, it's going to be just like any other review video. I want to compare it straight off the bat to its top competitor, and that's the Crane 2. So I'm going to release a first impressions video, and what the first impressions video is going to be all about, it's going to be just my overall experience with the Ronin S on my first professional shoot with it. Obviously, I'm going to take it on many other uh, more shoots, but tomorrow's shoot is going to be long. It's going to be very tiresome. It's going to involve a lot of camera movement. I have to wake up at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, so it's going to be one of those shoots that's going to really take myself and the equipment that I use uh, to its paces. So that's what I'm really excited about. It's going to be actually one of those really, really tough shoots where I just, I'm not going to sit down at all. It's going to be woo, straight couple hours, no rest. So it's going to be interesting to see how my body reacts to the weight of the Ronin S. So I can't wait to test that out. Um, One Journey says the Ronin S, will they sell additional internal charging options so we don't have to stop shooting and recharge? As of right now, nothing is released. Here's the problem uh, right now that I did notice with the Ronin S is that, so with the Ronin S, basically we have a two part system here. We have the upper portion of the Ronin S and then we have the lower battery portion or the, or the battery grip they call it. This little latch right here makes this whole system split up. So we have the battery compartment and we have the upper portion right here. This, this is actually the gimbal. Um, so, what happens is, is that the charging port for the Ronin S is on the top portion of the gimbal, which means that you can't charge the battery unless you have it connected to the upper portion of the gimbal. Uh, I don't like that design. I feel like if they incorporated the battery into the grip, you should be able to just unhook the grip, plug it into a wall charger and let it charge, and then plug in another battery grip so you don't have to stop shooting. Uh, I don't know if DJI can remedy this with a extension or some other thing uh, because the design really doesn't seem like it could do that. Um, so even if you had a secondary battery grip, I don't that that wouldn't really benefit you because the first battery grip you use won't be able to charge while you're using the other one because you're using the upper portion of of the gimbal, which is the only place where you can actually plug in a USB and charge it. So kind of a little bit of a weird, confusing decision DJI made there. Uh, but I don't know if they can remedy remedy that somehow. There's no actual ports on the battery grip. So I have no idea how you would be able to charge it without hooking it up to the actual gimbal portion. So I don't think that's a possibility. Uh, right there, it's just, it's, it's not a convenient uh, thing that with the Ronin S. Uh, I wish they would have planned that out better. Um, they were heavily threatened by Juin Tech. Uh, they needed to put something out quickly. So I don't know if that design flaw actually had to do with that. Um, I did notice that NAB, when I saw the pre production version of the Ronin S, the joystick was probably this, you know, far out. And uh, they got a lot of complaints about that, so they shortened up the joystick. So I did notice that change there. I was really happy about that. Uh, they did nothing to the weight. The weight is just as heavy as it was at NAB. Um, also, we have a follow focus dial on the side here. Okay. Again, this is not a review video, guys. I just want to talk about the basics with the Ronin S and just show you my overall thoughts uh, before actually taking it on a professional shoot. My shoot is tomorrow at 5 a.m. So. Um, I will be doing another live on Sunday talking about uh, my experience, and then my official first impressions of the Ronin S video will be coming out on Monday. That's where I'll show you the actual test footage and all that good stuff. All right, let's answer some more questions. Uh, Eric says, I have watched Parker's comparison to the Ronin S2. He is very good at these gears, but also now going to wait for Josh's review. Wow, thank you so much, Eric. Um, Josh and Parker are the guys that trust when reviewing these stabilizers. They rock. Thank you so much, Eric. I appreciate it. Uh, can't, can't wait for your video, man. I know you know this in and out. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. What's up? What's up? Um, okay. Will you actually shoot over 12 hours in a day or even more realistic, 10? So we all know that these gimbal companies, you know, they – say 12 hours, but it's actually going to be less than that. It all depends on the actual weight of the payload and how well you balance it. 
in my experience, I never needed to use a gimbal more than three or four hours at a time for a shoot, okay? So I never had an issue with any gimbal except for the Feutech A2000 when it came down to battery life. The Feutech A2000 had the worst battery life out of all these gimbals. Um, so, but all the other gimbals that I've tried, like the Moussa Air, um, the Fossey Cam FM145, actually that gimbal had bad, bad battery life as well. But um, I, I don't think I will have an issue with either gimbals when it comes down to battery life. However, the Crane 2 is rated to have a longer battery life. And why are these large numbers so important? Well, you don't want to go, you don't want to have to go home every single night charging your equipment. It would be nice to just keep your equipment packed up in the gear without having to take it out, charge it, put it back in, and then go back the next I'm worried about. I'm not worried about using the gimbal 12 hours straight during a shoot. I'm worried about using the gimbal without charging it with uh, throughout multiple days. Uh, I just don't want to keep taking out my gear, charging it, putting it back in. Again, us filmmakers, we need to worry about other things rather than charging up all our equipment, even though that is important. Uh, batteries now are supposed to have our gimbals last many, many hours. So we shouldn't have to worry about you know, charging our stuff every single night. It would be great to have that spread out through multiple shoots. So I hope I hope that makes sense. Um, so yeah, soldier edits, I hope that answered your question. On a typical day, I would not say 12 hours is, is typical for using it just solely on a gimbal. You're gonna be taking it off and all that. So I would say maybe f maximum five, six hours straight on the gimbal, and that's actually pushing it. Uh, but yeah, I don't see myself using a camera on a gimbal for that long even. Um, Eric Garcia says, on time Atos review, the Runner Nest was completely destroyed in terms of features, but Parker's comparison made me think again because that was clearly way smoother than the Crane 2. Okay, so I watched both Tom Anto's review and uh, Parker Walbeck's review. Uh, to be honest, they both, they both did a good job. Um, now, when it comes down to smoothness, I never, ever had an issue with my Crane 2 not being smooth. Never, ever, 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 ever. So in Parker's review, I was just a little bit skeptical uh, with his Crane 2 footage. Uh, it did seem a little bit you know, rough uh, during some of the pans that he was trying to do. Um, I never had an issue with the Crane 2 in that regard, okay? Uh, so I need to test that out for myself with the Ronin S to make sure it also doesn't do that. But yeah, that was just the only thing in Parker's review that I thought was just a little bit weird because I never experienced that with my Crane 2. Um, and if you don't know, this is like my go-to gimbal for my shoots. Uh, I always use this thing. This is like my one stop for getting smooth footage. So this is my main, my main gimbal shooter right now. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to, uh, test it out for you guys one-on-one -on -one with telephoto lenses. That's another thing I wish Parker would have done is add telephoto lenses on the gimbal because that's where you're actually going to really start seeing, uh, the difference between two different gimbals. All right. So you're going to have wide. All right. This is what I expect for wide lenses. Both these gimbals are going to rock. Okay. For mid range lenses, like let's say a 35 to 40. That's where we're going to start seeing slight differences in stabilization. When we bump it up to 85 millimeter, that's with image stabilizer turned off. That's where we're going to see a real difference between the two gimbals at 85 millimeter. This is actually where, where I did my comparison video with the A2000, the Fade Tech, and the Crane Plus. That's where people saw how the Crane Plus destroyed the Fade Tech. Because the 85 millimeter, I put on that 85 millimeter, and you can see how the Feutech was really having an issue with bobbling. And uh, that's the ultimate test for any of these gimbals. Just smack on uh, an, a telephoto lens, and you're going to really see the difference between gimbals. Uh, wide, wide lenses, piece of cake. I'm sure it will be for both these gimbals. Uh, medium, mid-range lenses, again, I think it won't be a, a tough thing for either of these gimbals. But when it comes down to telephoto, that's where you're gonna really see the difference. Um, okay, 
Uh, Israel, what's up, boss? How you doing, Diego? Thank you for the comment. Um, Diego says, I have the June Crane 2. Great performance. Israel says, so I got a unique Q500 4K Typhoon drone. How well do you know about it? Is it recommended at all? I did a review on the Typhoon H. I compared it to the Phantom 4, actually, but that's an old video. But let's focus on gimbals right now because that's why I came onto this live stream. I wanted to quickly talk about the Ronin S for a little bit. Um, I'm going to plan to buy which one is better for tractor running shot and inside running tractor. Hmm. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, first time catching you live. So thrilled. I'm new to video. I have the Crane Plus and Sony H6500. Your channel is my go-to for tutorials. Thank you so much, Barefoot. Thank you. Soldier Edit says, yes, throw a juicy 85 mil on and compare the gimbals. I'd love that. Yeah, guys, if you really want an accurate comparison between gimbals or any other sort of stabilizer, I, put a telephoto on there. Screw the wide lenses. Screw the mid-range lenses. Put a telephoto on the gimbal, and that's where you're gonna see a real difference. Um, yeah, any any gimbal can basically shoot with a wide. I mean, wide wide eats up all the bumps, so uh, telephoto is where it's at. Creative Mike Paper says, do you need to use a cage if you're using a Sony A6300 on the Crane 2? Absolutely not, you don't have to. Uh, Joel says, is the weight of the Ronin S really as big of an issue that some people make it out to be? Because I don't think you'll be running around with the gimbal for a whole day. Um, you'll put it down some time. Okay. So there's going to be instances like, let's say you're having a tracking shot that's five minutes long. Uh, I've had an instance where I had a tracking shot that was five minutes long for a promo video and I had to shoot it with a gimbal. After five minutes holding the Sony A9 and with a 16 to 35 Zeiss, which is not that heavy of a setup, my back was screaming. Five minutes. It was just a five minute tracking shot. It was audio was being recorded as well, so I couldn't put the gimbal down. Uh, my back was screaming. I was in so much pain. Uh, and that was using, uh, I believe it was, it was the Crane 2. It was the crane too, for sure. My back was screaming, okay? And this gimbal is not that heavy. It all has to do with, you know, the A9 and the cage and the 16 to 35. When you start packing on that weight, it's gonna, you know, five minutes will do a lot of damage. I'm scared with the Ronin S to do five minutes. I feel like my back is just gonna like, just like, you know, twitch and I'll just fall over. But I won't know until I try it. Um, but yes, weight is everything, everything with these types of gimbals. You're not expected to have like a vest system and all these other rigs set up. These types of gimbals are meant for those traveling filmmakers, for those run and gun filmmakers. For those of you who don't have a lot of time to set up, you just want to be able to just pop your camera on here and start recording. You know, a lot of us don't have times to put on, uh, don't have time to put on vests or anything like that. So I, I want you to understand that scenario. Um, so both these gimbals are definitely meant for those quick run and gun shoots. Uh, da, 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 da. So yes, weight is everything. And so far the Ronin S is significantly heavier. I will know tomorrow if the Ronin S is too heavy or not. I will know tomorrow because tomorrow I will have long tracking shots as well. It's gonna be a workout video. There's going to be scenes in the workout video where I can't cut. I have to do one continuous orbit. I have to get into the, you know, really close to the bodybuilders and show the actual muscles working. So that's going to involve a lot of tracking, a lot of movement, pans, tilts, and I won't be able to cut up that footage as frequently as like, let's say, a music video. So for a lot of you who've watched my Rob Rich's uh, workout videos, a lot of the shots are continuous takes. I I cannot really cut up that footage because I want the audience to see how it's done in real time. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. Um, can we get 360 roll shot with the Crane 2 like the Ronin S? Not yet. Not yet. That's a firmware update away. It's uh, Nothing is restricting the Crane 2 to do that regarding the hardware. So all they got to do is upgrade the firmware and it will be able to do that. That's actually a really good point, and I'm going to be talking about that in my first impressions video. 
Uh, I noticed that the Ronin S has that feature. So you know what? Let me mount my camera on here so I can show you how that feature looks like. I'll do that really quick. Uh, and I want to talk to you about the issues with the with the, with some of the roll options here. Let me just go ahead and mount this on here. By the way, this is stated to be a Manfrotto quick release plate, so it's supposed to fit basically any standard tripod. Again, I'm going to test that out later. I haven't tested it out yet. Um, go ahead and quickly mount this on here. All right, so here's the Ronin S. Sorry if the angle isn't that pretty, but let's mount this baby on here. Okay. Quickly balance it. And lock it up. Okay. I think we're just about almost there, guys. I got to drop this down a little bit, it looks like. There we go. Let's see how we are here. Sorry if it's getting a little quiet. I'm just focusing on balancing this thing, guys. Okay, I think we're just about ready to rock. Yeah, I would say we're balanced. Okay, let's turn this puppy on. So to turn on the Ronin S, we have two uh, power buttons. Something I also thought that was a little strange. We have a power button on the battery pack. So just like any other DJI drone or product, we have to double tap that until all the green lights are on. Then we go to the side of the gimbal here, and there's another power button we press right there. Hold that down. And then we have our chime. Okay. Actually, let me double check to make sure that the pan axis is balanced. Okay, as we can see, it's not. So let me fix that really quick. I want to Make sure that's properly done too. Don't want to cut any corners here. One second, guys. Sorry if I'm not replying to your questions. I'm just trying to get this done. Okay, pan is balanced. All right, so as I said earlier, we have a power button on the side. Right here, press that, you see the lights turn on. We have a chime, gimbal activates. Okay, so here's our gimbal. All right, here's our Ronin S. Looks very stable. We have a trigger in the front of the handle. If I go into flashlight mode, double tap the trigger. The camera will automatically adjust to point straight. Okay, I'm gonna go into mode two, where I actually custom programmed the roll 360 so I can actually roll the camera like this in a full 360 motion okay so I'm actually getting I'm tilting as I do that so there we go right there okay full 360 motion there guys all right now I wish that DJI would have done something even though I love that feature it's great it's it's fantastic but because the Ronin S is heavy and my camera setup is kind of heavy, there's a lot of weight in the front and it's kind of making me tip over and it's making my arms work twice as hard. I love that feature, but it's only meant for quick, quick shots. I, I would have wanted also DJI to incorporate what the Crane 2 has and that is the roll follow. So as I turn, the camera would also move on that same axis. I, I want DJI to incorporate that. Uh, they need to incorporate that, and it's possible that they will. Um, so far, as I know, the only way you can um, copy what the Crane 2 does is with, the, with this um, joystick. So I can do this, but if I turn the gimbal, it's not gonna follow, and as you can see here, the Ronin has problems spasming, 
Okay, you see that? It has an issue with spasms. So they don't have the algorithm perfect yet. DJI still needs to work on their algorithms. It likes to spasm. Okay, uh, let's try and go into inverted mode. I had an issue with inverted mode yesterday. Uh, so all we gotta do is this. All right, you can see that the camera automatically started pointing down. Not that big of a deal, but again, that's something DJI does need to look at. Okay, it likes it likes to do weird things going in and out of inverted mode, and there's a little bit of a gimbal shake. This is all firmware, guys. This has nothing to do with the hardware. So if DJI wanted to, they could fix this. But again, to me, this is not a complete product. Um, and that's that's okay because this is DJI's first single-handed gimbal, professional gimbal, I would say. They already released the Osmo and stuff like that. But you know, with their knowledge in gimbals, I, I thought that they would have released more of a complete product that doesn't spasm. Um, and you hear that shake. I mean, that stuff is not supposed to happen. Okay. I don't have those issues with my with my crane too. And I'll prove that to you in just a moment here. Let me answer some questions. So we do have some spasming issues with the Ronin S. We do have some stability issues going in and out in inverted mode. Um, as I said before, when I try to do gimbal moves like this, I mean, there's just some spasming issues. And you can, you can see, like, it, it, it can do some weird things. Good news is, is that the Ronin S motors are very, they're very powerful. I can feel the torque whenever it spasms. I can feel like my hands want to just like let go of the handle. It just like wants to spin out of control. So these motors have a lot of torque. Uh, so I do like that. Um, all right, let's answer some questions here. Uh, all right. Wow, a lot of questions. Uh, let me try and answer every single one here, all right, guys? Okay, here we go. Um, all right. Um, okay, late to the stream, but made it. Awesome. I often I often find issues with the micro jitters on my GH5. Still love it though. Okay, micro jitters. Send me footage, guys. If you have issues with like micro jitters or anything weird, send me footage. Um, I don't check my Instagram messages too much because a lot of it pops up in the others folder and then I have to like filter it and stuff. So if you can email me, I'll do my best. I'll do whatever I can to get back to you. But if I don't reply, keep emailing me until I reply. Just don't, please don't get offended if I don't reply, but you got to keep sending your emails to me. If I don't reply, send me test footage of your issues using an unlisted link on YouTube and I'll take a look at it. Um, okay. Don't blow up my inbox though. If I don't reply, wait a week and uh, send me another email after a week. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll talk to the, I'll talk to the team and see if this is a normal issue. If I'm experiencing this issue, maybe I can recommend some settings for you, but yeah, uh, send me footage. Um, okay. Momentum Productions, didn't know you were having a live stream today. Glad I got on. I didn't either. I just, this is a random live stream I decided to do. Uh, Benji says, I have a crane too, but since running S function is working on GH5, I'm thinking of buying one. All right. Virgil Hart, Momentus Prime, what up, what up? Uh, Joel says, okay, yeah, I hear ya. Makes sense, bro. Come to Village says, my channel, always shooting videos about tractors, running shot, side view shot, following shots. Um, zoom crane and DJ Ronin S. Can we use a mini hand grip from the June on the Ronin S? The answer is yes, you can because it has the same quarter 20 inch port on the bottom. Um, okay, next Virgil Hart says, Yeah, the Ronin S plate bizarrely fits. Some Manfrotto mounts, but not all. Likewise, not every Manfrotto plate will fit on the Ronin S. It's weird. Yeah, I have to put that through the test. I actually have a Benro plate, which is the same as the 501 plate for the Manfrotto tripods, and I need to see if it fits on there. It fits on the crane too. I know that. Tried it, but I haven't tried it on the Ronin S. I'm still in the beta stages of testing this thing out, guys, so please bear with me. 
Um, balancing is pretty easy, I would say, for the most part, by the way. The only issue I have with the balance is this arm. It's very difficult to move. Uh, it, it gets stuck pretty easily. So maybe some lube can help grease that up. Uh, again, not that big of a deal, but I do feel like DJI needed to do slightly better with their quality control. Um, slightly better. They needed to put out the skimble, guys. They needed to put out the skimble. Um, they needed to compete with what's on the market today. So I, I kind of understand why they did what they did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. Uh, still waiting for the Crane 2 to work with the GH5 without follow focus servo. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Is there any way to disable the chime on the Ronin S? I haven't found anything about the chime uh, in the menu, in the app. So as far as I know, the answer is no. I would like to see that being a feature because sometimes when you're shooting behind the scenes on the professional set, you can't have beeps and chimes. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, all right. 360 is the one I like with Ronan as spazzing, LOL, yes. Hold the trigger when doing inverted. All right. Hold the trigger. So I have to press a button when when I want to go into inverted mode? Ugh, not a fan. Yeah, I mean, but look, even when I press the trigger. I mean, like, what the what the hell is it doing? So DJI needs to work on their algorithm. Like, <laughs> I mean, it stabilizes the footage, I'm sure, but like, when you want to go in in and out of inverted mode, I mean, just another thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't let you hand position the camera. Uh, the Crane Two allows you to do that. And you hear that shake? Do you guys hear that? So there's definitely some things, some kinks they got to work out. There's some kinks they got to work out. The potential is great, but it's not finished yet. And they got to work on the software. They got to work on that firmware. Um, Hardware-wise, it seems like it's pretty robust. And I'm pretty happy with the quality. Algorithm, not so much. So they got to work on that. Super chats galore. Thank you guys so much. Po Boys Diesel, thank you. Marius Viru, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Um, what is my email address? I'll type it in below. Info at capturethemomentum.com. Again, if I don't respond, email me again. Don't stop emailing me until I respond. That's a rule for you guys. I get a lot of emails every day. I want you to email me till I respond. That's the rule. Uh, I want to teach you guys how to be persistent because persistence is what generates that power. All right. You got to remember that persistence is power. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> Virgil Hart says, do you think that Juin will incorporate design features from the Ronin S and Smooth 4 into the Crane 3? Oh man. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about some things. This is where I love, I love DJI. I have their drones, I had their Osmo gimbals uh, before I used Juin products. I liked it. Okay. But this is where DJI screwed up, majorly screwed up with their marketing strategy. They are late in the game with the Ronin S. They're very late. Because look how many gimbal companies you have out there. You have Juin Tech, all right? They've been making handheld gimbals like this for, for years now. Uh, you have the um, Gutsen that makes the Moswa gimbals. You have Feiyu Tech, and you have a bunch of other gimbal companies out there. Where was DJI with the single-handed gimbal? They should have been in the market a long time ago because now they're starting to get feedback from their customers about some of the hardware uh, changes they should have made. And now they're stuck because they already made the skimble. They already shipped it out to customers. Now they have to stick with this design for a year until the Ronin S2 comes out. 
biggest hardware issue I see so far with the Ronin S, the charging port. Why is it on the top half of the gimbal instead of being right on the battery pack? That means that when the battery, you can only charge the battery pack when it's connected to the upper half. So you can't shoot and charge a gimbal at, a, at the same time, which really annoys me. If you buy secondary hand grip, it's not going to really benefit you because you can't charge a grip while you're shooting. Um, you have to have it connected to the upper portion of the gimbal. So I hope DJI, you know, for the Ronin S Mark II, DJI, I hope you're watching this. This charging port should be on the battery pack. Should be on the battery pack. Has to be. It cannot be separate. Um, not a good convenience factor there. Uh, when we're talking with the Crane 2, all you got to do, unscrew the handle, and we got three 18650 batteries. Okay? Plug and play system here. That's all you got to do. Just take out the batteries, put them in the charger, put in your new fresh set of batteries. And these are not proprietary batteries. You can find them on Amazon for 20 bucks. The Ronin S has a proprietary non-removable battery. So over the years, the battery will degrade and then you'll have to buy a new battery pack and Lord knows how much DJI is gonna charge for that. I'm thinking 200 bucks, uh, but I could be wrong, but I think it's gonna be around 200 bucks, maybe cheaper, maybe about, it's gonna be over 100, I'm thinking, for a new battery pack for the Ronin S. But as of right now, because it's such a new product, I don't think they sell the battery handle separately just yet. But if you're gonna use this gimbal for a lot of shoots, like four or five shoots a week, you're going to be using it for two or three years. You're significantly going to see a decrease in battery uh, life uh, because lithium-ion batteries, lithium-polymer batteries, they will degrade over time, just like everything in life. That's perfectly fine. But with the Crane 2, I mean, all you got to do is spend 20 bucks on a new pair on a new pack of uh, 18650 batteries, which are found anywhere. Um, and DJI's is proprietary. Uh, okay. All right, let's uh, answer some more questions. Ken, thank you enough for doing the stream. You just answered so many questions. I have the Crane 2 and was worried about buyer's remorse. Guys, if you have the Crane 2, just stop. If you have a gimbal that does its job, just stop, all right? I know that the Ronin S looks fancy and it has all these features, but you got to ask yourself, are you really concerned of just having the gimbal because it's, it looks brand new, it has all these features? Are you going to actually use the features for your work? Don't just look at the gimbal and be like, ooh, it's shiny, I want to buy it. I mean, that's me. You don't want to be like me. I see something shiny, I'm like, ooh, I want that. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a mental, that's an addiction, okay? Uh, that's a shopaholic. So you don't want to be like me. <laughs> You want to have more money in your bank account. Uh, you want to be a good investor for your business. So if you have a gimbal that does its job, if it doesn't jitter, if it doesn't do weird things, stick with it. If you have a crane too, stick with it. If you upgrade your camera that needs a higher payload, that's when you should consider upgrading to a bigger gimbal or to something else that can actually support that camera. Don't be too focused on what's shiny and what's hyped up, okay? Um, that's something I have to worry about because I'm on YouTube and I have to review the newest tech, but when it comes down to the average consumer or to the average filmmaker, you don't need to upgrade your gear every single year or every single time a new product comes out. Uh, that's something I have to stress a lot to you because I know a lot of you guys are like me, shopaholics. Um, if you just want like a little trophy collection of gimbals, that's perfectly fine. If you can afford it, do it. Um, but overall, we don't want to be spending hundreds and thousands of dollars in equipment that we don't need. Okay. All right. Next question. Andrew Harry says, my job for now is only shooting for weddings and some documentary. Is it enough only using the Juin Crane 2 or should I get the DJI Ronin S? I, I think I just answered that question. If you already have the Crane 2, stick with it. Um... I mean, it, it gets the shots. I've used the Crane 2 for ever since it came out. I think it's already been a year since it came out. Uh, if I'm, if I'm, no, actually, not yet. It came out in twenty, late 2017 or early 2018. Not a year yet, but it's been out for for a while. And uh, 
I have a lot of experience with it and I've never had any issues, never had, honest to God, never had any issues with the Crane 2. It's been a very reliable gimbal. Um, yeah, so I, if you already have the Crane 2, why would you need any anything else? I think it's just a, just a silly move to buy another gimbal if you already have something that does its job. And as I said before, like, you want to invest in your business for the better, not for the worse. Um, and by not buying the newest stuff out there just because it's shiny will save money for you. Um, okay, tilt it down to the front to get into inverted mode. Yeah, but listen, guys, I don't want to have to tilt anything down. All right, a gimbal is supposed to be automatic. All right, I want to just be able to go into inverted mode without having the camera spaz. All right, like what? What is this? What is this shake? All right, it's not supposed to do that. I've owned probably seven or eight gimbals so far, and yes, they have their faults, but every manufacturer knows that the gimbal's supposed to seamlessly go in and out of inverted mode without any problems. Uh, I need water. Okay. Are there any calibrations you can do to try and correct the spasms? Yes, I was doing that all night last night. I was doing a balancing. Uh, there's actually a really cool feature in the Ronin S app, and it tells you if you properly balanced your camera. It actually tests each axis to make sure that you balanced it properly. And I got excellent scores on the pan, roll, and tilt uh, axes. So I did everything right. Um, I love that feature. Good job, kudos to DJI for including that little test that it does to check to make sure that everything is balanced. I love that. I really like. I really like that. Um, I did the calibrations. Everything is perfectly fine. This is just a little algorithm bug that they need to fix. Okay, just an algorithm bug. So if you already have the Ronin S, I mean, just I don't know. I, try to get some info out of DJI to see if they're gonna correct these algorithms. Uh, but right now, it is not right. It is not right. I mean, if I'm just shooting it regularly, it's fine, it's behaving normally. Um, we also have those quick pans that we can do with the Ronin S. Um, at times, it can be a little bit unstable, but for the most part, yeah, see, it just, it does weird things like that. Like, did you see that? All I was doing was turning the gimbal like this, and it was going crazy. So there is definitely some things that the Ronin S needs to work out. I was doing quick pans. That's all I was doing, and the camera flipped upside down. So yeah, all right. So and every now and then I get some weird vibration issues. So just panning, 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 right? And I can start feeling that the gimbal's losing a little bit of control. All right, you see what it's doing? All I'm doing is panning. All right, and then it flips upside down. So, I mean, it's all in the algorithm, you guys. All in the algorithm. And ideally, you're never going to be doing that on a shoot. I'm just saying that a gimbal is not supposed to be doing that. And after using it for a few hours yesterday, I didn't notice... Four guys, Juin has been doing these gimbals for a few years now, so they're a little bit more experienced with single-handed gimbals. They're a little bit more experienced than DJI um, when it comes down to professional single-handed gimbals like this for DSLRs and SLRs. So they know what they're doing. Um, DJI is kind of new into that field with the single-handed gimbals. It's not an easy thing to manufacture. It's not an easy thing to code. Um, so... Don't start blasting either company of gimbal that you may have, okay? Uh, it does take time for the algorithms to be worked out. That's why we have firmware upgrades. I've had gimbals before. Uh, my Kane TV Argo, that was my first pro gimbal that I ever owned. It was like a copy of the Ronin M. That thing was an absolute nightmare. Um, <laughs> Kane TV, unfortunately, was of no help because they didn't design the software for that gimbal. It was actually a third party uh, software made by a company called Basecam. Um, that was probably the worst experience I've ever had for a gimbal. 
So if you're ever looking to buy a gimbal, buy a gimbal that the company makes the algorithm for. Don't buy a gimbal that uses a third-party algorithm. Uh, I'll give you another example. Pilotfly is another company that doesn't design its own algorithm. That's not good. Uh, I love Basecam. I love it. But for a user who's not familiar with Basecam, who will go into the settings, they will mess something up in the Basecam software, and then the gimbal is going to go absolutely nuts. And it is very, very difficult to reset those settings individually. I had to manually go into the Kane TV Argo firmware, uh, which was the Basecam software, and individually like adjust each axis, okay? Each, each of the axis, like by 0 0.01 degree. It was just an absolute, absolute nightmare. Uh, I have nightmares of it still to this day. So that's another tip. If you're looking to buy a gimbal, make sure that you buy from a company that designs its own algorithm for the gimbal. That way they can easily give you firmware updates and if you need to download a reset um, program or something like that, they can easily send that to you. Uh, Kane TV couldn't really help me out and I know that Pilotfly has similar issues as Kane TV because they use third-party algorithms. Uh, don't rely on that. Um, as much as I like their designs, it's all about the software as well. Stay away from gimbal companies that don't make their own algorithms or their own firmware for that matter um, because you will run into those issues. Okay, next question. Soldier edits. Are there, okay, I already answered that. Uh, after pressing the button. Okay, next question. Have you tried putting a quick release plate on the top of the existing Manfrotto plates so that you can take off the camera off the gimbal quickly to do handheld shots. I haven't tried that yet, but I will be trying that tomorrow on my shoot. I'm gonna try my best and get some BTS of that shoot as well, so you actually see how I'm using the Ronin S, uh, not just the footage from the Ronin S. Uh, why aren't my, did my chat stop working? I hope my chat, chat didn't stop working. When I get excited, I notice that I start stuttering a little bit. So if I'm stuttering, please forgive me. <laughs> um, all right. Any more questions, guys? Any more questions? Don't be shy. This is a first look type of live stream. This is before I take it on its first official professional shoot. Um, and fitness shoots are pain in the butt to shoot with gimbals sometimes uh, because they have to be, some of the shots have to be long and continuous. Uh, so yeah. If a company designs its own firmware, its own algorithm, it has a lot more control. They can easily send it to the R&D department, technician department, whatever, ask them to change it. follow focusing module, an actual follow focus uh, motor to control my focus. I don't rely on the internal focus like with Canon cameras. Um, that's always the best option, guys. I wouldn't rely on internal follow focus because it's jittery. You want to get an external gear. Uh, external gear, external motor, that's what's going to get you that smooth, uh, those smooth um, focusing moves, okay? So you want to stick to that. Uh, do, 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 do. do you hope the Crane 3 incorporates a similar grip design like the Ronin S? I will give that to the Ronin S. I like the grip a lot. Uh, I like the grip a lot. It fits my hand perfectly. And as you can see here, like they, they really took some time designing the grip. You can see the little rivets in the rubber here. Uh, this is sweat resistant, so if you do start sweating or if it gets really hot, you're not going to slip, okay? So you do have this excellent rubber here on the, on the handle, and you have this little indent for your forefinger, so they really did take some time to design the handle of the Ronin. I will give DJI credit. They did an excellent job with the handle. It's ergonomic. Um, when it comes down to the joystick, I'll tell you right now, I'm not a fan of protruding joysticks. I'm not a really big fan. Uh, if you take a look at any like Xbox controller or PlayStation con PlayStation controller, you'll notice how they have flat joysticks, just like the Crane 2. The Crane 2 has a flat joystick. 
I prefer those. Uh, I just feel like my thumb rests easier on the joystick and it won't get tired from using it. I can already tell like after a few minutes of using the joystick, my thumb really just has to work its way to the back and it can get a little bit tired uh, from using the joystick too much. So again, uh, that's just something DJI should look out for when they make the next version of the Ronin S. Uh, we have a joystick here. Actually, it removes, and I just lost it, but it can actually be removed. So let me find that joystick before I regret it. All right. I have a joystick to find. Okay, here it is. So it's, it's really tiny. That's the joystick. And it just... Screws back on, so I do like that. It's it's modular, so maybe they might come out with a little attachment. I dropped it again. That might make this a little bit easier to control. All right, oh, it's gonna be a pain finding. I'll worry about that later, guys. <laughs> so I need to remind me at the end of this live stream. I gotta find that joystick. Um, okay, my last question. At my place in Indonesia, the difference, uh, the difference between Jew and Crane 2 and the DJI Ronin S, DJI Ronin more pricey around 250. Um, does it make it a perfect choice to buy the Jew and Crane 2? If the Ronin S is $250 more, I'd get with the Crane 2, definitely. Crane 2, definitely. Meza family says Ronin S rules. All right. Um, NBD Visual says, hey, Josh, picked up the Mosua Air today from B&H for 379 deal of the day. I uh, really want the 45-degree slant, but couldn't press on the deal. Hope more slanted gimbals come out soon. Okay, awesome. Uh, ever use the new remote joystick for the follow focus wheel? Are we talking about the Crane 2? Meza family says a joystick is more practical. It really isn't. Um, it's not. A flat joystick is what you want. That's why game controllers have flat joysticks. So video gamers, they need to be on a joystick for hours and hours at a time. So uh, Microsoft and Sony, they know that they got to flatten out those joysticks. That way your thumbs won't tire out as much. So... That's the difference between a protruding joystick and a flat joystick. You want things to be flat. That way your thumb won't have to work as hard to make a movement. So that's just one little thing. Again, as I said earlier, this joystick pops off. So maybe they'll make another attachment that's flat and you'll be able to use a flat joystick. Not that big of a deal. I'm just saying for ergonomic purposes, uh, it's, it's a little annoying. Um, Steve Holt says, when I switch settings on the Crane 2, like motor settings, and I make a change, the motors turn off until I press the mode button. Is that normal? Yes, that is normal. Mine does the same thing. Um, Andrew Harry says, thank you so much for your help, Guru. Anytime, Andrew. Thank you for watching. For the dual handle setup, of course. Um, Brayden, never use a new joystick fall. What do you mean for the dual handle setup, of course? No, I, I, I made a video on that. I made a video on how I mount uh, the follow focus remote on there. Paul Pan is asking how precise my joystick is. On which gimbal? The Crane 2, I'm assuming, right? And first off, I need to find the joystick. Guys, I need to find the joystick really quick. Uh, but Paul Pan, you're watching, brother. Okay. Little issue with the Ronin S. And that is going into inverted mode. Major vibration issue there. Okay. A little bit of a vi vibration issue there. So, Paul Pan, I know you're close with DJ. You're part of DJI. Um, so, sometimes it doesn't do it. But no vibration issues should be happening there. Um, Again, it's it's not a hardware thing, guys. It's a firmware thing. So that's like a firmware update away. So I'm not tripping. Um, but yeah. So with the Crane 2, how precise is the joystick? I'm going to mount my A9 on here. I think that would be cool. If 
but I need to find that little joystick that came off the Ronin. Where did it go? Oh, man. Yeah, so that joystick is somewhere. Guys, I don't know where it went. Oh. All right, I'll look for it later. So yeah, that's one thing you have to be careful. The joystick, it comes off of uh, the Ronin S, and uh, if you lose it, that's not good. So DJI, if you're watching, make sure you have spare joysticks uh, that people can buy. Um, okay. Uh, Marius Vru said, did not respond to my super chat. Accessories to the Ronin S, what will come out? I'm not sure about the Ronin S accessories yet. I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure a dual handle system will come out. I'm sure an LED screen will come out. Um, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, Steve Holt, cool, thank you. I thought it broke. Um, Shiv77 says, does the Crane 2 have the capability with the firmware upgrade to have a fast pan like the Ronin? Is the Crane 2's hardware beefy enough to do the 360 pan? Yes to both your questions. So the Crane 2, it's it's a firmware update away to do a 360 rotation. Firmware update away, no problem. Is the Crane 2 motors powerful enough to do um, uh, to do that movement? Yes, the answer is yes. It's beefy enough. Uh, not much accessories for the Ronin S right now. Yes, nothing is out currently right now, guys, for the Ronin S. The Ronin S is in limited quantity too. Okay, it's sold out. It's not even available on Amazon yet. So uh, I'm sure they're pumping out as many as they can. Um, how smooth is the focus pull from the Ronin S with the GH5? I don't have a GH5. And as far as I can tell, DJI is in the beta stage, uh, beta stages of testing out the fall focus with Sony cameras. Um, so hopefully that will be that will be uh, out soon. Um, but as I said earlier, I do prefer a, a fall focus motor uh, compared to an internal internal focus because it's just not gonna internal focus is not gonna produce as smooth movements as an external motor. Uh, man. I really hope I find that joystick, guys. I'm starting to freak out a little bit. <laughs> um, okay. Dirk Savage says, read the manual and not supposed to go into inverted mode on the side. You tilt it forward. Mm-mm. Supposed to go into inverted mode on the side because who's gonna? It's really not that ergonomic. FM145 from Fossey Camp had the same thing. You had to tilt forward to go into inverted mode. No, it shouldn't be like that. You should be able to go into inverted mode like this. All right, and hold the gimbal like that. You shouldn't have to tilt the gimbal forward. I mean, for the most part, DJI almost has it. I should be able to go like that, okay? Um, so that's something they need to fix in a firmware update. All right, cool. <sighs> okay. All right, next question. I have the Crane 2 Ronin S Moby 10, and I find each gimbal is different and each has their strengths and weaknesses, and it's good to Use the gimbal that works best for what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, cool. Have you tried using the tracking module in the Ronin S? So how does it compare to the Crane 2? So there's a little bit of a confusion with the tracking. So with the Ronin S in the app, there's a, there's an option called tracking. And what you can do, you can actually pre-program uh, keyframes to have the um, gimbal automatically follow those keyframes, so it can replicate those movements. Uh, that's what that's what they are referring to when they say tracking. It's not like with the Crane 2 or with the Crane Plus, where you can actually have motion tracking, where you can mount a phone on your gimbal and actually have it track a moving subject. The tracking feature is done throughout keyframes. So you program those keyframes, and then uh, 
yeah, you have the gimbal autonomously move, which is kind of a unique feature. Um, so yeah, kind of a unique feature there. Uh, yeah, all right, cool. Next question here. Have you tried using, okay, we answer that. Marius, and wireless fall focus for Ronin S, when will it come out? I have, I have no dates for you about the Ronin S accessories, no dates. I have no confirmations. I'm impressed by the Crane 2's follow focus so far. I hope DJI makes one that's not the price of the gimbal. The DJI also looks like it could hold larger lenses due to the placement of the rear, rear motor. So the answer to that is yes. This rear motor is not only for visibility purposes, but it's also so you can actually have a larger, longer camera, longer lens. So yes, I do like the fact that we have more space to play around with. Uh, when it comes down to that. But as we can see here, guys, um, mind you that the, uh, you guys can't really see it, but maybe if I turn it, mind you that the quick release plate does not clear the motor. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can't push the quick release all the way back. It can hit the rear motor. So keep that in mind. I am freaking out about the joystick that I lost. With your permission, guys, I would like to go for a little hunt and find it. Where did it go, man? I'm going to be up all night finding nothing. As I said before, I have my first official shoot with the Ronin S tomorrow. It's going to be a fitness shoot with two massive bodybuilders. Uh... And I'm going to be shooting long tracking shots, so I want to see how that's going to affect my back using the Ronin S because it is significantly heavier than the Crane 2. I want to see what toll it takes on my back. Uh, I want to test its stability, overall ease of use. I want to see if the joystick really annoys me or not. Uh, this is just my prediction because protruding joysticks are never usually a good thing. Uh, that's why game controllers don't have them. Think of it that way. They have flat joysticks. Uh, so yes, uh, that's very important. Um, Soldier Edit says, how do you deal with becoming a shopaholic? Sometimes I hate being gear driven, but I love new tech like the Ronin S and I'm sure I'll like the crane update. Yeah, I'm lucky because my mom's a hypnotherapist. So whenever I have an issue, I just go to my mom and she puts me under hypnosis and then I'm good for like a week. Uh, but no, no, in, in all realness, um, how do I deal with it? I take a deep breath and I try to ignore B&H Photo and Amazon for a little bit. And uh, yeah, just stay away from those sites. Put them on your block lists on your, on your computer so you can't access them. Um, Michael says I should find the joystick. Yeah, I'm starting to freak out about it because that thing is so tiny. Um, so DJI, you're watching this, make sure you have those in stock because people are going to be like me. They're going to be losing it. All right. Um, I feel like it's under one of my table's legs. So that's not that big of a deal. By the way, I got a standing desk. Um, yeah, so that's a nice little upgrade there. By the way, also follow me on Instagram tomorrow or now. Uh, I'm going to be posting some BTS shots with the Ronin S. Uh, so that would be cool. And also check out Rob Riches on YouTube. He's another fitness guru that I shoot videos with. And I would say 95% of the time I'm using the Crane 2 for his workout videos. You can see how stable and steady the Crane 2 is. Um, so you can get some feel for the Crane 2 there. I also did a review on the Crane 2. I have a ton of tutorials about the Crane 2. So you can see a lot of the test footage I shot with it on those videos. I have no test footage with the Ronin S yet. I'm getting some tomorrow, and you'll see that in my first impressions video on Monday. And I will go live again on Sunday. Which do you think is better fit for narrative filmmaking specifically? I need more time with the Ronin S. I really, I sincerely need more time with the Ronin S. I'm just giving you my first impressions. Um, 
straight off the bat, guys, if you're a traveler, you need something lightweight. And with the weight of the Ronin S, I just after using the crane too, it's just it's too damn heavy. Um, I weigh 210 pounds. I go to the gym every day. I'm not trying to gloat about this or anything, but I lift weights. And for me, the Ronin S is heavy. Uh, I saw a comment on another channel um, from actually one of my viewers as well. Uh, he was saying to another YouTuber who was talking about how heavy the Ronin S is, he was saying, if it's uh, if it's too heavy, why don't you lift more weight? So that kind of made me laugh. That was a funny, funny little comment there. But I lift weights. I'm telling you right now that the Ronin S after for a five minute shoot, I'm sure is going to be a pain in the ass. I will find out for sure tomorrow. Uh, this is just a prediction. Uh, but I was telling you with a five minute tracking shot with the crane two, my back was screaming. And this is much lighter than the Ronin S. So I'm going to tell you right now that if this made my back scream. This is going to make my back give out. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Um, thanks for the live stream, Josh. You're welcome, Brayden. Gregor, isn't the same joystick on the Mavic Air? There you got some extra joysticks with the drone. Really? Hmm. Yeah, but the joysticks on the Mavic are, are longer. They're much, I think they're longer than what's on the, on the Ronin S. I have to double check with my Mavic though. Um, maybe a friend has a Mavic Air. Oh, so the Mavic Air joysticks are different. Um, you're not getting some until you find that joystick. <laughs> Steve Holt says, damn, the weight of the Ronin S is my least favorite feature. Yeah, guys, honestly, look. There is a lot of metal on this thing. There's a lot of metal. I love the quality, the build quality A+, but they did not need all of this metal. They did not need all of it. Look at this. Look at this. I'm going to turn off the, the runner really quick. I want you guys to look at the size of the motors, the size of the casing of the motors between the... Crane 2 and the Ronin S. Okay. They're about the same, correct? I would say they're about the same. When we go to the body of the gimbal, look at the difference. Okay, so we got the Crane 2 right here, body of the gimbal. Look at the size of this. Look how much larger it is. Look how much longer it is. A lot of extra metal there. Um, and for some reason, I don't know why, but I have a question for DJI. Why is the handle so heavy? Why is it so heavy? Why is the battery so heavy? Why are the 18650 batteries so much lighter than what DJI is using in the Ronin S? That's just some little little things I'm, I'm wondering in, in the design of the Ronin S. Like, why do they do it that way? As I said earlier, the quality is spectacular, but you're really limiting filmmakers because of the weight. Uh, traveling filmmakers are gonna be in trouble. I know that for sure. Um, so I just, I'm a little bit worried about the weight here. And I'm worried about my tracking shots for tomorrow's workout video. I just don't want my back to hurt, but I'm gonna sacrifice it for the sake of you guys. So you guys know what it's like. Um, I'm going to try and live stream tomorrow's shoot too. I'm going to try no promises because the gym doesn't have good, uh, service over there. So I'll try, but at least I'll have some BTS shots on my Insta. I'll also have BTS shots for my first impressions video for Monday. Um, but yeah, after I shoot with the Ronin S for a few hours tomorrow, professionally, like for workout videos, which is what I generally shoot, I'll have a very clear idea of what it's like using the Ronin S on my type of work. Um, and then, yeah, and I'm going to shoot with it over the weekend. I'm going to shoot with, I'm going to just take it with me everywhere. I'm going to take two gimbals with me everywhere. Okay. Imagine how big of a pain that's going to be. So I'm going to take these two monsters with me and we're going to have some fun. And my full comparison review video for these gimbals should be out in about two or three weeks. Uh, there's a lot that goes into these review slash comparison videos. So it's going to take me some time to pump that up for you guys. Uh, but my first impressions video should help you out with your purchasing decision on whether or not to go with the Ronin or with the Crane. 
Um, so that first impression, like the first impression guys is everything. Okay. That's why when you go on dates, the first impression is everything. When you go on interviews, the first impression is everything. So with the Ronin S, that's what that's what the experience is going to be. The Ronin S are going, the Ronin S and I are going out on a date tomorrow. Okay, so you better impress me, Ronan. You better impress me. Uh, I'm not saying anything bad about you just yet, or anything good about you just yet. I need to see you in action, and that is tomorrow. Uh, okay. Next, next, next. More questions. I know a lot of you are excited about this. <laughs> Michael says, Josh was 140 pounds before he started using the Ronin S. A week later, look at him now. <laughs> Steve Holt says, have you tried the Crane 2 with an arm and a vest? Could that help? So I used to have a Steadicam um, dampening vest. It wouldn't work with a gimbal like this because it had a pin that actually would go into a handle of a manual gimbal, like let's say a glide cam. These gimbals, these two gimbals have quarter 20 inch ports on the bottom. So it wouldn't benefit me. Uh, however, I think with the dual handle setup, you can get what is called an anti-gravity rig, which will actually latch down onto those handles and you can actually uh, work with that. So um, I haven't had any experience with those vest systems. I don't want to use vests. I don't want to use supports. I don't want to use anything like that. I want it to be just me and the gimbal. That's it. Okay. Um, that's it. Because I want my shoots to be as lightweight as possible. And I already take more gear than I need. So I don't want to take even more gear like the vest and all that. Um, I've shot, uh, what is, what is it called? I shot parties with the crane too. I mean, I haven't had any issues. Uh, with the crane to it at these kinds of events back does get tired. So I do have to set it down every now and then but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy Okay I see it two dislikes man two dislikes on this live stream. I think they have they are unfortunately, I think they're DJI Ronin s users, but guys Everything that I say now is a prediction. It doesn't mean that it's gonna happen. It's a prediction so you have to wait until my first impressions video comes out before you dislike this video. All right. I'm not saying anything bad about the Ronin S yet. Okay. Nothing bad. Um, nothing good except for the hardware. The hardware looks fantastic. But wait for my first impressions video before you start disliking my stuff, man. I mean, come on. Give it a rest. I'll tell you right now, like, this is DJI. They're going to make a quality product. All right. But I'm going to test it tomorrow. Um, these are just predictions. I know for a fact, though, the joystick, I'm feeling like it's going to annoy me a little bit. I already lost it. Um, but that's just my clumsy self. For those of you who aren't as clumsy as me, you probably won't have that issue. <sighs> okay. Uh, Poe Boys Diesel says, please do let us know. What all comes out of tomorrow's use? I'm really looking forward to hearing how it performs for you. I'm looking into getting my first DSLR gimbal. Okay, so for you, it's going to be very important to watch uh, the upcoming videos and content that I'm going to put out. Uh, Juna says, Juin Accessories, do you know if it's possible to use the server follow focus at the same time as the camera control? It seems like they both want to plug into the tilt motor and USB port. Thanks. So there's two ports on the servo follow focus. Uh, so a cable is going out of the crane to into the servo follow focus. And then there is an output that you can actually connect a secondary cable going from the follow focus into the camera. So you got to look, there's two ports. So it should be able to control both your follow focus and your camera. Um, Steve Holt says the Ronin S has a three date rule. You really think I should give the Ronin S three, three dates? I will. I will. So Ronan, if you disappoint me tomorrow, I'm going to take you on two more shoots, and uh, we'll see how you do. All right? Okay. Why did you lose balance here? Let's see if we can fix that. But guys, you see how easy it is to balance the Ronan. It's it's very it's pretty damn easy. I mean, I I haven't had any issues balancing it. The only thing that I want to grease is this arm here. It can get stuck, so I'm going to. Maybe put a little bit of a little lube on there. 
I mean, this is metal on metal, so it's going to happen with all these kinds of equipment. You just got to keep it lubed up. Let me turn it back on. This joystick still hasn't been found. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to fill up the comment box with questions. I'm going to go hunting for this little joystick because it's starting to give me anxiety. All right, so I'll be right back. I'm going to go under my table here. 30 seconds. I'll be back. Ask some questions. I found it. Oh, man. How did it get there? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I found it. Oh, I found it. Boom. I was right. It went under the legs of the table. Okay. So we're going to reattach it. I dropped it again. You see? You see what's going on with me right now? I dropped it again. I found it again. Oh, my God. This has to stop, guys. Please, this has to stop. <sighs> Screwing it on. Please do not get loose again. If I lose this thing, I'll be very upset. We're good. It's tight. We're good. Woo! All right. We're good. You can see how stressed I get because my hairs start going out of control. <laughs> Guys, this live stream is too much fun. I don't want to go off. I don't want to go off this live stream. Um, Steve Holt. You're talking to somebody else. Michael says, dislike count as likes in YouTube land. It's just a click, right? Does it really matter if it's a like or dislike to YouTube? Honestly, I don't know. Engagement is engagement, right? But guys, I'm not saying anything bad about the Ronin S, all right? So if you have, I need to shoot with it first, okay? So everything that I'm saying to you right now, it's a prediction, okay? It's a prediction. I'm... For me, it's just looking at this thing and being like, okay, this might happen. That might happen. This is happening. The only thing I am having an issue with is that inverted mode thing. People say you have to go into the manual, you have to go into a lock mode, and then tilt down, and that's how you go into inverted mode. This is not a good way to go into inverted mode. Look what happens to the roll motor. You can't – I mean, like, what the hell, all right? A gimbal is supposed to let you go into inverted mode by going to the left and going under like that. That way you have full clearance. There's no weird motor blocking your lens, all right? So DJI, you can fix that. You can fix that. Come on. Firmware update. Crane 2 can do it. All right. But besides that and besides the annoying charging port, um, those are my two things that I'm for sure annoyed about. Um, Battery life, don't know yet. Stability, don't know yet. I need to shoot with it first. Um, this is like my pre-first impressions shoot. <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind. I'm just here answering some of your questions because I do have these two gimbals, the Jew and Crane 2, and, uh, and they're owner that side by side. Let me balance. Let me put the A9. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you want me to mount my A7S onto the Crane 2, or do you want me to put my A9 onto the Crane 2? I guess it doesn't really matter, right? I want to have both of these gimbals active so I can compare the two straight off the bat. I've got my A9 here. Okay. My next camera, by the way, is going to be the A7S Mark III. So I'm waiting for that pup to come out, and then I will be getting it. So right now I'm mounting Sony A9, small rig camera cage, 24 to 70 f4 Zeiss lens on the Crane 2. Okay. This is going to be a slightly heavier setup than what's on the Ronin S. So I guess that's kind of a good thing, right? Because the Ronin S is rated to control heavier weight, but I'm kind of reversing that. I'm going to put the heavier weight on the uh, Crane 2 here. There's my coin. Always, when you go on a shoot with a gimbal or any sort of quick release plate, have a coin with you or some sort of flathead keychain. That way you can easily tighten this stuff up.
Derek Savage is saying Paul Pam is from DJI and he's watching right now. Awesome. Yes, I know Paul Pam. All right. Paul Pan, you're watching right now, buddy. I'll tell you, good work on the hardware. Good work. Only issue right now, I think, for the next generation of the Ronin S, or uh, if you do a version 2 or something like that, put the charging port where the battery is. Okay? You got to do that. The battery has to be charged separately away from being dependent on the gimbal head because if I want to swap out batteries and continue filming, that's the only way of doing it. Okay. Or come out with some sort of dock where you can put the handle on and charge it that way. I mean, I, because I need to be swapping out batteries. I can't just have one battery to rely on. If something even shorts out on the battery and I don't have a second battery that I can use, like, I'll be screwed, you know? I can't, I need to have that ability to charge the battery separately from the gimbal. Um, for the next gen, consider that. So here we are, we're gonna be charging or uh, balancing the Crane 2 right now. So similar design, right? We have a Manfrotto quick release plate. I'm trying to get the tilt axis perfect, and then we'll work with the roll. Okay, lock it up. Let's mess with the roll here. This is the part where I get quiet because I concentrate when I balance. Tilt axis, let's balance that. Almost. Looks like we're gonna have to rebalance the roll axis too. Okay, tilt is balanced. Let's rebalance the roll now. Whoop, hang on. Don't rush. We can do it better. Okay. Nope. Okay, tilt is balanced. It's Oh, no, it's not. What's going on? Oh, that's why I have to push the camera back. Okay, tighten it up. Let's see how it does. Okay, tilt is finally balanced. We got that right. Forgot about the quick release plate. It has to be adjusted. Okay, roll is balanced. Let's check the pan axis now. Pick it up, tilt it. Pan isn't balanced, so let's work with that. Pan is usually the easiest one to balance. Okay. So all of these axes are supposed to be still. There you go, pan is balanced. All we gotta do now is just turn it on. Okay, so we'll wait for the crane two to boot up. Done, boot up. So. Whenever I go into inverted mode with the crane, no problem like that. I don't hear any jittering. Do you guys? It was in the same exact position that the Ronin S is in. It may move a little bit, okay? Some areas may move, it may shake a little bit, but I don't really have such violent jittering like I did on the, on the Ronin S. See? Same position as the Ronin S. No jittering, nothing too crazy going on. And we also have flashlight mode as well, just like the Ronin S. Okay. Now to get out of this flashlight mode is a little bit tricky because I did it a little bit funny. Let me start it here. Move my office chair. Let's see here, okay. Let's tilt down the camera, that's important. All right, so here we go. Both at similar angle. This is the Ronin doing the shaking. 
Okay. That was the Ronin. The Crane, no crazy shake going on. Maybe very vague shaking. Yeah, a little bit right there, actually. But then it just wants to go into flashlight mode. But we don't get any crazy shaking like I do with the Ronin S. Okay. A little bit with the crane too, but that's just looks like it wants to go into like flashlight mode or something. Okay, let's test that angle for both gimbals. So crane two can do it. Ronin S, not so much. So that same angle, the Ronin S has a little bit of a problem getting into. Okay, cool. All right. I love the I love the love you guys are giving. Very positive vibes. And even though you guys may have the Ronin S, please don't be mad at me. This is a video simply to help either company out, you know, Juin Tech or or DJI. I mean, this is DJI's first professional single-handed gimbal, so it it is a learning experience for them. Um, just like it was with their Inspire 1, which honestly, as many times as I had an issue with the Inspire 1, I still loved it um, because it was basically the first of its kind. My Inspire 1, man, I will never forget when I had that drone, it would, the biggest issue with the Inspire 1, it would lose GPS signal and then it would start drifting. So it was a little scary. So I feel like this is... DJI's version of the Inspire 1. And this little vibration issue is kind of like the Inspire losing GPS signal. So in a sense, it kind of it kind of relates. Um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Braden says, how much does the lens support Y adapter help? For these lenses, not so much. Uh, I wouldn't say they help help too much. If you have like one of those large uh, Zeiss Battist wide angle lenses, um, I, I feel like it would help a lot more. Or if you actually zoom out, when you zoom out, I can't do it now because it's pressed up against the lens. But when you zoom out with these lenses, uh, that lens support is going to help quite a bit. It's actually going to, it's going to prevent the camera or the lens from tilting down. So keep that in mind. Uh, that's why I do suggest using uh, the Y adapter when you're using a zoom lens, just so you have that extra stability uh, when you need it. Jason says, you're the go-to guy for gimbal techniques and reviews. We all def appreciate it. Peace. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that, brother. Palm says, my crane tube won't turn on and my batteries are fully charged. Ever had this issue? I can't get it to turn on. So your batteries are fully charged. What happens when you plug in your USB when you're connected to the uh, connected to the computer? Well, let me know. If Sony added a flip out screen, then most won't need the 45 degree feature, but it may fit larger setups. To be honest with you, I don't think Sony is going to add a fully articulating, fully artic articulating screen. Uh, to their Alpha Alpha Series cameras. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, R. Scott Johnson says, uh, Johnson says, so often the 45-degree uh, gimbals end of in the way because most of us hold the gimbal at an angle and not straight up. Well, I hold my gimbal usually straight up. Um, I do. And I never really complained about a 95-degree angled motor. I still have full visibility of the screen. I mean, I never really complained about it. I think that looking beyond the visibility, I think one of the biggest reason, reasons why DJI did what they did is because you can mount longer lenses. You have more flexibility uh, when it comes down to the camera that you can put on and the lens you can put on. Um, honestly, the 90 degree angle, the fact that people say they can't see the screen, I think that's BS to be honest. Um, because I see the screen perfectly fine. I really think that the 45 degree angle motor is going to benefit those of you who um, want to use larger cameras. 
uh, like a 70 to 200. I made a video with the crane too with the 70 to 200, and I did have a little issue with the clearance. I don't know if I'm going to have that issue with the Ronin S with my 70 to 200 G Master. Okay. So, yeah. Um, any more questions? Um, Michael Maestro Pierce says the Inspire One was the worst investment I ever made. 3K when I bought it two years ago, and I'm paying eBay more than I made it to sell it. Sh shaking my head. I love my Inspire One, even though I had some issues with it when I first got it, dude. That was like that was my baby, and I regret selling my Inspire One. I think that was DJI's like most proud. Like that that's something DJI really needs to be proud of. The Inspire one. I think that's something that nobody thought could ever be made, ever. I mean, they took Terminator, they took one of their aircrafts and made it into reality. That's basically what DJI did. They took a movie, a fictional mode of transportation, a fictional, <laughs> a fictional plane, and they turned it into reality. I mean, damn. And the Inspire One was just like that was that was insanely cool. I love that thing. I think DJI needs to be very proud of that. And I'm I'm happy they're continuing with the Inspire Two, with the Inspire Three that that will come out eventually. Like I'm happy they're pursuing that. Um, and that's something I think DJI really needs to focus on. I think the Inspire series is something that uh, yeah, that's 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 a great drone. There's nothing better, nothing better than the Inspire. Um, so, Michael, I don't know why you had such a bad experience with your Inspire. I apologize. Uh, but I'll tell you right now that, in my view, the Inspire one was the greatest thing, the greatest, like, greatest drone ever made. Uh, like, man, that thing was so perfect. Uh, even with it was perfectly imperfect, if that makes sense. But oh man, getting all emotional talking about the Inspire One here. <laughs> um, Benji says, I don't think you can get rid of the Crane Two that easily since the Ronin S doesn't have a lot of accessories. Uh, guys, if you have a gimbal that does its job, you don't need any other gimbal. So don't be don't be hypnotized by the shiny shiny new toys, okay? If you have equipment that does its job, stick with it. The only reason why you should be upgrading is if you have other cameras that require something more. That's the only reason why you should be upgrading. I would rather focus on lenses and lights and other things that will help improve image quality. But if you already have something like a gimbal that does its job and it does its job well, then you shouldn't be investing in another gimbal. Um, that's just my overall take on this situation. Uh, and I hope I hope that makes sense because I do strongly believe that. Uh, yeah. We'll make this a two-hour live stream. I think you guys are having a good time. I'm having a good time. I'm having a blast. So we'll keep going with this live stream. Um, have you by any chance played with a Canon ADD or similar on the Crane 2? I don't. I had a Canon 5D Mark II, but that was sold years ago. So unfortunately, no. Um, but a lot of people are using 5D cameras. I don't know of anyone using an ADD, but 5D definitely on the Crane 2. I actually was balancing a 5D Mark, was it Mark 3 or Mark 4, at NAB at the Juin Tech booth. So I was doing like little tutorials there, live tutorials for people. Um, STM Film says, run an M until I get a red. You see, there you go. There you go. Um, if you have something that does its job, if you buy a red, obviously you can't, well, actually, with both of these cameras, you can actually balance the cinema camera. You can actually put an FS5 on here. 
I saw a picture of, of a red on the Ronin. Um, but I'm talking about if you need to fully rig it up with like a map box and all this other crazy stuff, obviously you're going to need to upgrade to a bigger gimbal. That's when you should be upgrading, not because of something shiny that comes out. All right, that's that's the thing. Apple does this, DJI does this, all companies do this. They want to keep staying current. Um, but if you're an investor, which I know you are, uh, because all filmmakers are investors, you need to think cautiously of your money and where it's going to. Uh, I remember a, I bought a $7,000 camera that was the biggest flop I ever made in my filmmaking YouTube career. I lost so much money on it. It made me probably 500 bucks. <laughs> And I've had it for three, two or three years. Oh man, I wasted a couple. I wasted a couple grand on that camera. Um, so the Canon XF three hundred five broadcast camera. I'll never be making that mistake again because that was pretty bad. Kali Films, uh, Khalil Film says, Khalil Film says them do handles are hell. Why are they hell? Are you talking about the Ronin M? Jason Brooklyn says, you ever use the mini handle? I find the dual handle cumbersome. I do have the mini handle. I made a review on it. I love the dual handle systems uh, because I feel like they give me more support for my back. Again, guys, I've been in a car accident. I have a little bit of nerve damage on my left uh, shoulder blade. So whatever dual handle system I can get my hands on, I'm going to be very grateful for. Uh, so I do prefer using a dual handle setup rather than just a single handed, -handed setup. But obviously, for the review and tutorial and comparisons of these two gimbals, I can't be using a dual handle system because DJI didn't release theirs yet. So I need to be using it single-handed. So yeah, I want to make this comparison unbiased. I want to make this comparison real, authentic, just like what I did with the Feiyutech A2000 and Crane Plus review. I don't want to be biased. I want to have factual evidence of why I decided to go with a certain gimbal for a shoot, okay? So factual evidence is what I'm all about. Um, and you will be seeing that in my comparison review video. Okay. Khalil says, the dual handles on the Crane 2 are more on the run and gun setups and the dual handles takes a long time on side. Perfectly understandable. Michael says, man, that shoulder blade crap is a pain in the butt. Ouch, at times. Yeah, seriously, it uh, yeah, it's pretty painful. I got into an accident in 2016. I totaled my Hyundai Sonata. That's what I was driving. A guy was making an illegal U-turn, and as he was making the illegal U-turn, I T-boned him like this, basically. So, yeah, that's what happened. And uh, looks like I got permanent damage. I got a herniated disc, but that could be from weightlifting. I don't know if it's from, I don't know yet if it's from my car accident, but my, my shoulder blade, for sure, car accident. Uh, what do you think about the dual handle with the spring for eliminating the Z-axis movement? So I've been contacted by a few companies to review their Z-axis dual handle systems. I'm not into it. I feel like that's the most cumbersome thing you can use because that's, again, think of it as another thing that you have to take with you on set. And it's not light, okay? It's gonna have some weight to it. It's not a simple dual handle system. There's springs, there's metals. They, I mean, I feel like if you lose one screw on that thing, the whole thing is gonna fall apart. So I feel like with gimbals, it's all about the technique now too. You can get smooth footage, if not smoother footage, just by using your hands instead of using any other rig, okay? Uh, ninja walk, knees bent, heel to toe, even when running. I mean, I have tutorials on this, guys, that will greatly help you out. You don't need to invest any in any other sort of rig to help you smooth out your footage. You really don't need to. It's about pacing, breathing, technique, body control, all of those things in order to get yourself the smoothest footage possible, okay? Uh, don't think that 
I mean, this is the same thing that happened when the single-handed gimbal first came out. People thought automatically that they're going to get smooth footage, and that's not the case. Uh, some people's footage looked worse than handheld on a gimbal because they didn't know how to use it. When you start learning and practicing how to use a gimbal, then your footage starts looking a lot better. There is a learning curve to gimbals, guys. Don't expect it to just work magically. Um, with this Z-axis fad that's going around, I wouldn't buy into it. I think you should spend your money on something else. Uh, again, as I said before, lights, um, you know, other camera accessories, maybe some sliders, something else. Uh, again, don't focus on, once you get a gimbal, stick to it. I don't think you have to worry about accessories too much. If an accessory costs like a hundred bucks, like for the dual handle system, a regular dual handle system, go for it. That's something you'll need a lot. But the spring-loaded Z systems, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. Um, yeah. Will I review one? Maybe. But right now I'm not focused on that and I'm not, I'm not too interested. So if you guys want me to review it, I'll do it. But I promise you, it's not going to make your footage look better. I promise you. Um, Cold Boys Diesel says, okay, cool. That covers my general question. Just kind of referencing the weight issue. Yeah, so um, if you guys do have, like, sensitive backs, arms, shoulders, uh, I know that my back is pretty damn sensitive. Um, you know, um, oh, what's going on? Um, yeah, so if you, if you do have sensitive body parts, like your back, arms, or whatever, each added, like each, I don't know, uh, pound or kilo or whatever you guys go by, it matters a lot. It can be a quarter pound. It can be an ounce. You will feel it. You will feel every single Thing added to your gimbal every single thing that adds weight to your gimbal you're gonna feel it um, so you want to be as lightweight as possible so I hope that makes sense because um, that's important and I know that for my shoot tomorrow I need a I need a stretch <laughs> I need a stretch before my shoot um, because I know that my the long tracking shots are gonna are gonna do some damage they're gonna, it's gonna do some damage. So um, in order for me to produce these videos for you guys, I sacrificed my body just a little bit. Um, that's okay. I'm doing it for you guys so you guys make better purchasing decisions, but you know, it does cause a little bit of discomfort, a little bit of pain, but it's worth it at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Michael Meister Pierce says, do you think about systems like the Tilt and Nucleus M wireless follow focus for different stabilizers, even one-handed gimbals? Uh, I haven't really looked at the Nucleus M. I've seen maybe like one ad for it, but I haven't really researched it. Um, but thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'll, I'll take a look at that. But yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, recommending it. Uh, any questions, guys, regarding these two gimbals? I mean, I have them set up right here. Uh, here they are side by side. Again, I'm shooting with my MacBook Pro camera, so I don't know how well this camera is picking everything up, but let me make sure. Two, yeah, there we go. So we got both gimbals. As you can see, though, it looks like the Ronin S is significantly higher than the Crane 2. So I'm going to tilt up the camera and I'll show you guys the difference. Hopefully you can see a little bit of the height difference. Um, no, you probably can't. But the Crane 2, I would say, is about an inch shorter, maybe a little bit less than the Ronin S. Um, that has to do, obviously, with the Ronin S's uh, longer body. This, this piece right here, it's pretty long. Uh, so it adds a little bit of height. Is that a negative? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's a negative. It's just a design um, that they did. But as I said earlier, I feel like there's just way too much metal in this system. A lot of metal, great quality metals, but there's just too much of it. And I feel like that's something that they should have focused on when making this more of a consumer-friendly gimbal. Uh, you don't want things to being too heavy. The 
the skimble is pretty damn heavy. Um, but yeah, I haven't showed you the, the front of the gimbal here. It's a joystick, record button, uh, mode button, three presets right here. Uh, you can have different modes for the gimbal, different shooting modes like lock, pan, follow, whatever you want. Uh, we also have a uh, trigger here. When pressed, double tapped, it will reset automatically. When held down, you will enter lock mode. And you see it jittered a little bit right there for some reason. So I don't know why, but you'll enter actually uh, fast whip pans. See, I don't know why it jitters, but you'll, when you hold down the trigger, you will actually also have full lock mode. And this is something the Feiyutech A2000 had. Um, what happens if your finger gets tired? Maybe there's a way I can reprogram this so that I don't have to press the, the trigger down the whole time. If I'm doing like a long hyperlapse, I don't wanna be holding down this trigger for too long because my finger's gonna get tired. Um, so I wanna be able to let go of the trigger and still have the gimbal in lock mode. I know that after reading the manual, uh, double tapping, or actually, I think it's holding down the, the mode button, uh, this will change to like an amber yellowish color. That means you'll enter fast pans or sport mode or however they call it. And you can see here the gimbal starts reacting a lot, fa a lot faster. But as I previously mentioned, after doing fast pans after a while, the gimbal slowly starts to lose control. And you'll start seeing that right now. There we go. You see? It just starts losing control after a while. So that's again, it's an algorithm issue. They got to work out, but yeah. That's my take on that. Steve Holt says, I would like a NATO rail on the side of the uh, crane too. Uh, so small rig and a NATO rail trying to add the Atomos in cage and use it with a top handle as a handle slash left grip. You know, my friend Tam, Tam Lam on uh, Instagram, I think he has a similar setup to what you're describing. Uh, so I would check him out on Instagram. He posts a lot of BTS stuff of the gear that he uses and he loves his cages and his NATO rails. His setup is by far the most complicated, but yet coolest looking that I've ever seen. So I would check out his Instagram, uh, Tam Lam. Um, he's a really, really cool guy. I love shooting with him at, in, uh, Hermosa beach with Jason Vong and all them. So check out his, uh, his rig. Um, it looks great. Looks heavy, <laughs> but it looks great. I mean, he was able to mount um, follow focus, the cage, NATO rail. He was able to mount uh, also with the dual system, dual handle system. And he was also able to mount uh, the wireless follow focus remote. So yeah, he has a ton of BTS photos. I'm not like that. I try to just use the gimbal on its own at most, maybe the dual handle system, but I don't wanna, again, as I said, my back, does not like heavy weight. Does not, unless I'm at the gym, my pack does not like heavy weight. Uh, but yeah. Um, Steve Holt says, laugh out loud, I will check it out. Sweet. Awesome. So it looks like we got pretty good positive remarks on this video overall, except for those two dislikes. Um, guys, for these review videos, I try to be as unbiased as, as, as possible. Uh, every opinion I have will be based off of a fact. I will prove it to you. Um, and you'll see that in my full comparison slash review video of the Ronin S to the Crane 2. I will back it up with fact. Um, I just showed you a few facts straight off the bat with the Ronin S, few quirks with the Ronin S. Um, there's just some instability issues. Um, and the, the weight definitely for, that's locked in as being an issue and the charging port. Second thing that's locked in into being an issue. I haven't tested the follow focus um, and I probably won't because they don't run out to my knowledge. Okay, I could be wrong. They don't make a focus motor, a follow focus motor yet for the Ronin S. So, and the Sony cannot be controlled by internal follow focus. So I can't use this wheel. I can't. I'm a Sony user. I only have Sony cameras. 
So I'm kind of out of luck with the focus. So if that's the case, I will probably not mention the fall focusing feature too much. If the if anything, I'll just uh, mention the wheel and the smoothness, the diameter of it, how it compares to the crane too, um, and that's about it. But uh, honestly, it looks yeah. I mean, honestly, I won't be able to test out um, the fall focus on the Ronin the Ronin S. Unfortunately, they just don't have the uh, accessories available yet. So yeah, okay. Well, it's getting hot in here. So. Um, but yeah, guys. Any more questions? Let's keep going, man. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I got a standing desk. I got I got my standing desk and the Ronin S on the same day. FedEx told me that the Ronin S was going to come on a Tuesday and that my standing desk was going to come on a Wednesday, and both came to both came earlier they both arrived on monday i got i was so happy i was so happy i was like shaking from excitement my ronin s i went to go pick it up at fedex a desk arrived at my my doorstep man that was, monday was such a good day that was probably the best monday i've ever had in my life when you order two things and they magically show up unexpected oh man such a good day that was the best best monday of my life <laughs> Uh, okay. Next question. Steve Holt says, good Lord, he has a ball head mounted to the side of the runner nest to hold the monitor. Yeah. Yeah, Tam Lam by far has to be like one of the most creative yet, you know, like he has, he has the heaviest, heaviest setups I've ever seen. I don't know how the dude does it. And on top of that, he rides skateboards while, <laughs> while filming with it. So the dude is a, the dude's a magician. Alvio says, hi, Indonesian here. I want to ask something. Um, Benji says, follow focus for the Ronin S only works with the GH5. Rumors said that it also works with the Canon. I haven't tested it out, but I've seen somewhere on Facebook. Someone said it works with Canon as well. Um, does the Ronin S have the same mode like the POV, like in the Crane 2? I mean, can we move the gimbal to have the Dutch angle like the POV in the Crane 2? Yes and no. You, um, for the Ronin 2, we have what is called full 360 rotation. So I can go into flashlight mode and rotate the gimbal. Okay. So there we go. You can do it like that. An issue with that is that it just becomes heavy to hold like this. Uh, you can also let me recenter the gimbal. You can also move uh, the roll motor manually by using the joystick here. Yeah. Okay, just like that. But as you can see here, guys, uh, there's a little issue with this motion here. Uh, this is actually an engineering little thing. So a lot of us are saying that we want a 45 degree angled motor. Okay, so. We're looking at the crane two right now. Let's go into, uh, yeah, so this is full follow mode. We have 90 degree positioning on the motor for the crane two. When we want to manually access Dutch angle mode, look how clean the camera does the turn, okay? We have no changes. We have a consistent horizon throughout the move, right? Because of the placement of the 90 degree motor, it's leveled, it's straight. However, when we go to the Ronin S, we are shifting the motor to 45 degrees, which is going to make the camera point up. So whenever I want to do a Dutch angle, manual Dutch angle move, you see how the camera moves differently? It's not going to keep a consistent horizon. You see that? So let's compare the two gimbals. Okay, this is going to be hard, but I'll show you right now. I want you to pay close attention to how each gimbal moves. All right? That's really hard to do this with two hands, but I want you to look at the crane too. Look how consistent it is with its horizon and the Ronin S. It's not going to keep a consistent horizon because of how the motor is placed, that 45 degree angled motor. That's why they decided to have the 360 degree motion. So, uh, yeah, so that's why they added this in there. 
What I would have liked from DJI is to incorporate roll follow. They don't have that. So I want to be able to do what the Crane 2 does. And if I go to the Crane 2, I can access POV mode and see as I turn the handle of the gimbal, the camera follows my mo motion. Okay. With the Ronin S, we don't have that feature. I know everyone's crazy about the 360 movement, but you can only do that for a short period of time simply because the weight of the camera is in the front and it can be very difficult to hold, especially if you're using a heavy camera. With the Crane 2, I, you know, with the POV, everything is proportionate. All the weight goes down. It's not going to the front. So I would have liked to have roll follow on the DJI uh, Ronin S, but we don't have that feature. Um, I mean, I love, don't get me wrong, I love the 360. I really love the 360. But as I mentioned, it gets heavy and difficult to hold very fast. Okay, so this is only meant for short shots, very short. Okay. I'm already sweating. This is like a workout for me. Ooh, turn on. I won't turn the fan. Okay. Oh, Michael, another good question. Do you work with jibs to or emulate the movement with the gimbal for the most part? I have a crane that I reviewed for a company called Cam Gear. It wasn't that good. Um, and I said that in the review. And um, I'm honest with my reviews. I actually, uh, I think our relationship kind of got terminated after that review because I think he kind of, the owner of that company or whoever was contacting me wanted me to be biased and be like, oh yeah, just, you know, he expected me to say good things about this thing. But <laughs> during the review video that I was doing for this jib arm or crane, screws were falling out of it. Um, <laughs> it was embarrassing. I don't know if anyone noticed this on camera, but screws popped out during some of the shots and it was, it was pretty embarrassing, but I had to state what was wrong with the crane, not the gimbal, the actual jib arm that was made by this company. And, uh, I don't think the guy that gave me the equipment was pretty happy with it. So I think our <laughs> relationship was terminated, but that's okay. Um, I try not to be biased. I had another company reach out to me, wanted me to remove, uh, not remove, review uh, action camera. And she she told me that she wanted me to be biased. And I told her no. And this was supposed to be a very cool action camera. I told him no, don't send me the equipment. I wanna be, I wanna be real and genuine with my audience. So I ended that relationship too. So these gimbals guys, I'm going to back it up with evidence and not just state my opinions, all right? That's that's my goal with these two beauties. I mean, I look at gimbals. I collect them all. Like, I have so many gimbals. I collect them like trophies. And when I get my new apartment, I'm going to have them all set up in the back on shelves. And my lighting will be so much better. And I'll have all this room. And then my videos will just look so much doper. So, yeah. Any gimbal can do live streaming? Yeah, the Jiwen Smooth 4 has the ability to do live streaming. Um, yeah, because these gimbals, this is working with DSLR and SLR cameras, excuse me. So you can't really live stream with that. Um, and she says, I also like the 360, but going to stick with the normal gimbal works since you don't need to make your viewer to be dizzy on the whole video. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. But for some shots, the 360 really looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I love the 360 for a lot of movements. Like if you're shooting, um, what's it called? Parkour. All right. They do backflips and stuff. It would be cool to really follow their backflip. When you, when you move a 360 in a 360 turn, while they are doing their backflip, it kind of makes it more immersive for the audience. So I wouldn't say it gets you sick. I would say it's actually more fun to watch. Um, but yeah. 
Uh, Hoang Fem says, I use the POV mode in the Crane 2 a lot. Just really love the way I can move the stick and to adjust, uh, and to have the Dutch angle. I will stick with my Crane 2. Awesome, brother. Awesome, awesome. You put up some really good points there. Uh, I think you're making a good move. Um, again, guys, wait for my first impressions video for the Ronin S, and then wait for my full comparison with the Crane 2. I mean... This is going to take me some time to do, but um, I'm going to be focused on it. Um, Steve Holt says, you definitely have me looking at the solo wheel gimbal after your review. Awesome, man. Yeah, I love my solo wheel. I have it here. I'm getting another one in August. I'm getting the V10F from InMotion. It's supposed to have a 2,000-watt motor, more than double the power, so I'm going to... And I'm more than double the range. So I'm literally just going to ditch my car and just go all around Los Angeles on my unicycle. <laughs> and then I'm going to join the circus too. Why not? Um, Uh-oh, my light went out. Damn it. Battery's dead. I'm going to get another light really quick. And then we'll do more tests. Give me one sec, guys. All right. Switching over to the Aperture M9. This is what I'm going to be using now. Before I was using the Sakani LED. I was only at 39% power. By the way, I already announced the three winners of this light. Um, I think they already received it, and they seem to be very happy with it. And you know what's funny with the Aperture 9? I need a hot shoe mount adapter or a quarter 20, min, quarter 20 inch mount for it. Let's, let's find that really quick. It's kind of annoying, but it's all right. Yeah, because this stuff is way too dark. I'm gonna, give me a second, mount this light on here. What is wrong with me today? I'm dropping everything. All right, I'm just mount it on here. Guys, it's 10.30 at night in Los Angeles and it's 90 degrees outside, so pretty damn hot. So right now I'm using the Aperture M9. Very cool. Woo! It's hot outside. Okay. Um. Okay. Next question. Show the roll angle error, please. The roll angle angle error. Do you mean like? What do you mean by that? Do you mean like this? When it starts vibrating like crazy? Do you mean that or? Or do you mean the 360, the 360 roll? Um, <laughs> Patrick C, do you have to be fit to use the DJI Ronin? My cousin gets tired easily, he doesn't work out. I would strongly recommend starting to lift a little bit of weight. Uh, I did a review with Kitty from Atola Visuals, not a review, but a tutorial on some cool at home exercises that you can do in order to build up your upper body along with your lower body, your legs. Um, overall, like when you when you start practicing with your gimbals, your, your body will naturally start getting bigger. I mean, your muscles will naturally grow, but if you wanna stimulate that growth, you do need to be lifting weight, I would say at least three or four times a week. Um, and you need to be eating. And uh, I would say yes, you do need some upper body strength. Uh, all Steadicam operators, uh, at least the ones that I've seen or know, they're in pretty good shape. Uh, they, they do have some arms, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, yeah. 
Um, okay, so. All right. I like the KC Pro Boys Diesel says I like the KC Nice that off as well. The gizmos and gadgets all put up on the shelves and walls. Yeah, that's something I'm gonna go for when I get my new apartment. Uh, I think around October uh, is when I'll be moving. Cause my place right now, uh, very small. It's not, and I'm moving in with my best friend. So, and nothing better than that. Um. Do you have any kids? No, I don't have any kids. My gimbals are my kids. Um, what was this guy? We have some weird people tuning in. Yeah, that's weird. We have some weird people asking weird questions. Okay, I don't understand. Okay, um, Michael Maestro Pierce says, I know I'm from Culver City. Yes, okay, turn on the AC, you broke ass. It's on, dude. It's on. It's, it's LA. Uh, uh, yeah, we're getting a weird amount of people now. Look at this, dude. We're getting spammed by a bunch of weird people right now. I'm trying to block them. This is weird. Two has asthma, so can't work out more than a few times a week. That's fine. Honestly, all you need to do is get those... Um, Tension bands and work out with that. You don't even need to use weight. Tension bands, I think, are the best. Um, Steve Holt says it's hot here in Ventura County, too. Oh, man, I'm sure. I'm sure it's probably even hotter in Ventura. Um, any recommended uh, backup battery for the Crane 2? The battery from June is ridiculously expensive in my country. Can I just use some normal 18650 battery? They are the same battery in the vape. Yeah, I noticed that. My bro uh, my, uh, not my brother, my friend vapes. And he has the same exact batteries that the Juin Crane uses. Yeah. I I mean, Juin doesn't recommend it, but if you're on a tight budget, yes, I would say use the 18650 batteries that you can get for cheaper. Um, I would recommend using, like, Samsung or LG batteries. Those are the most reliable. And then uh, you, should be, you should be good to go. Um, I just tuned in. Is it that much better than the crane too? Oh man, you just tuned in. We've been going on for two hours now. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, dude. You're gonna have to watch the live stream from the beginning. Um, but this is just like a, you know, first and pre first impressions video of um, the Ronin S. Um, yeah, we're getting a lot of weird spam people right now. Um, Gaia, thanks, man. Do they ship outside the U.S.? They should, yeah. Crane 2 and Follow Focus at $5.99 or Ronin S at $6.99. If you're looking at it from a budget standpoint, it would be the crane to, yeah. Definitely for my budget, you're getting more for your money with the crane to. I'll just, I'll just tell you what it is. Um, this is when it comes down to price. When it comes down to, um, when it comes down to all like functionality and like hardware, software, firmware, all that type of stuff, that's something we have to wait until I get a full test of the Ronin S. Um, I already know what the Crane 2 can do, um, but I don't know what the Ronin-S can do yet. 
I have my first shoot with it tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. His elect media says, I have batteries and a charger from a vape shop. Worked fine for the past month. There you go. Perfect. Awesome. All right, my friends. Um, I think I answered a ton of questions. We've been going on for over two hours for this live stream. I'm really glad that we got to talk about this. Um, I mean, I feel like we covered all of the uh, main essentials, all of the essentials uh, when it comes down to just, you know, getting introduced to the Ronin S. Um, I did point out some bugs. I did point out some hardware issues or maybe more like design issues. Um, if you haven't, if you're just tuning in now, go ahead and make sure you watch the beginning of this live stream. It's two hours long, so um, you might have to skip through some of it, but... Uh, my first impressions official review comes out of the Ronin S on Monday. And then two or three weeks from then, I will release my official, official, official review slash comparison of the DJI Ronin S compared to the Crane 2. And that will greatly help pur your purchasing decision um, on which gimbal is just better to get overall. Um, which one is better for the price, which one is better with functionality, uh, hardware-wise, build quality and stability, the most important part. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what's gonna happen in, uh, in under a month. And uh, I, I know it's gonna take a while, uh, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's worth it. It's uh, really worth it. Any more questions, guys? Last minute questions? Uh, Cooper JM says DJI has fatal errors in the units and seen in the roll angle point that controls nothing, it's axis. Um, June, send more units to Panama. Juna says, thanks a lot. Steve says, thanks, Josh. Benji says, thanks, Josh. Um, yeah, see what happens after you live stream for two hours, all these creeps start tuning in and start posting weird comments. It's really weird. I think I got all of them though. <laughs> Thanks so much, always providing tons of info. I sure do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching uh, Po Boys Diesel. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. there we go. Oh my God, guys. Never go live streaming for more than two hours because then uh, you get all these weird people. <laughs> Shadow Shadow says, thanks, Josh. I actually went for the Crane 2 a few days ago when the price was $5.99. Very good price. Um, thank you, Josh. Hello from Vietnam. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Which is better for cinematography? You're going to have to watch this live stream. Better yet, wait until I release my um, official comparison between the Ronin S and the Crane 2. I think that's what you're really going to want to pay attention to. But yeah. Do you get roll issues with the crane? Mm -mm, I don't. Um, I have both the June Crane version 2 and the Ronin S, the best of both worlds. VFX Todd, bro. <laughs> VFX Todd, I'm glad you tuned in. Um, I saw your comment on uh, Tom Antos' uh, review of the Ronin S. I thought it was pretty funny. I thought you should know that. <laughs> yeah, I saw I saw your comment. I wanted to reply to it, but I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> shadow, shadow. Any news of June will release a firmware update for the 360 roll. Good news is, is that I am in touch with our R&D department. I'm in touch with their managers. And they said it's very high possibility. 
it's definitely, definitely, I, I feel like it's going to happen. Um, I wouldn't say it's too far away. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Guys, if I fish out all of these weird people commenting, I think we can keep going with the live stream, but it's getting pretty, pretty insane. Um, yeah, look at all this. These are all like, yeah. You should, I need the, you should, I need the needling. <laughs> VFX Todd, man. That was a that was a pretty. I'm not gonna lie. That was a pretty intense comment. <laughs> it made me laugh though. It made me laugh. Okay, so if you made me laugh, I guess it's not that bad. But um, mate, any thoughts on the Crane Plus versus the Crane Two, brother? I made a video on that. Type that into the search of YouTube. Crane Plus versus Crane Two. My video is gonna pop up. Number one, watch it. And I'll answer your question. Um, which one I prefer? Short answer. Short answer. Crane two all the way. Um, crane two is just. I think that's the best gimbal in the June Crane lineup. Crane two by far. It, it won the Red Dot Award in Germany, um, so that's a pretty big deal. They just won it over, I think, the weekend last weekend. So that's great. Um. 360 roll potential on the crane two or plus as well. I am not sure on the plus. I am not sure about the plus. Nelson says legend. Oh brother. Nelson, you're the legend, man. You're the legend. Um, any more questions? I think we get VFX. How is your, um, how is your experience with the Ronin S bro? How's your experience with Ron S? Do you have an issue like, for example, okay, so look. I put the gimbal like this, and we have some, do you hear that? Crazy vibration going on. Okay. So, and listen, people were telling me that I didn't read the manual or whatever. Guys, it's a, it's a gimbal, it's supposed to be simple. Uh, I was, this, this guy was telling me I was going into inverted mode wrong and he might be right. He might be wrong. I don't care. Um, but I had a 45 degree angled gimbal before and you would have to tilt down to go into inverted mode. So I already knew that, but honestly, all gimbals are allowed, are supposed to allow you to go into inv inverted mode like this. Okay. If I were to tilt like what that guy was saying that I should do. What you're going to have is you're going to have this motor getting in the way of the camera. Okay, so all gimbals are supposed to go into inverted mode the same way, and that is by going to the left and just like that. And in essence, it can. It just does a little weird thing with the tilt, but it looks like it, it can still do inverted mode like this. Just a few little glitches there, but not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have that same weird jittering issue. Um, okay. Um, do you reckon the A7 III will come out this year? Yes. In September, it's rumored to come out. VFX Todd says, I've used the Ronin S for over 40 hours. I don't have any issues at all, but the Crane 2v2 is pretty dang good too, but the Ronin S has been pretty reliable. Okay, so I have my first official shoot with the Ronin S tomorrow. It's a fitness shoot, and it's at 5 a.m. So I think I'll, I'll put the Ronin S through its paces at this shoot. It's going to be a few hours long, long tracking shots, so we'll see how the weight affects my body. Um... So yeah, so between these two beasts, these are the beasts of the gimbal world, guys. These two are the biggest bulls on the market, okay? So, yes, they're going to be butting heads a lot. Get it? You see what I did there? 
Um, have you seen the review of Parker Welbeck? Do you find it biased towards the Ronin? Yeah, I saw Parker's review. I thought he was pretty good. Um, I like the way he presented everything and all that. The one thing that I didn't really agree with him on was, I mean, I mentioned this earlier in the live stream, was he mentioned that the Crane 2 has issues panning smoothly, and I don't have any issues panning smoothly on the Crane 2. So I'll, I'll have to disagree with him on that. Um, I had never had any issues with jittering jittering pans. Um, he did. Was he biased? I don't I don't know. I don't I don't think I don't think so. I think he showed proof. I don't know how he was using either gimbal. I mean I haven't had issues with the crane too. It looks like he did. Uh, so it, it, it depends. What I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and get as much footage as I can of me using both gimbals, like behind the scenes and professional shoots. That way you guys will see exactly what I'm doing and you'll have actual evidence of how I'm using both gimbals. And we'll compare the footage and do all that good stuff. So that's why it's going to take me a few weeks to get all this footage together. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, but as I said earlier in the live stream as well, if you really want to test out a gimbal, don't put a wide lens on there. Don't put a medium lens on there. Put a telephoto lens on there. That's when you're going to start to see stabilization um, because with the telephoto lens, everything is magnified. Absolutely everything is magnified. I got to sit down. I'm getting really tired. Um, So we're gonna the desk is gonna lower. Oh man, I was standing for two hours. Pretty tired. But yeah. Cool. All right. Now I'm sitting. But yeah, um I I'm just gonna prove with evidence, guys. That's the best way of explaining this. I'm gonna prove everything with evidence and then uh I can either share with you my opinion on which one to go with, or you guys can make that opinion on your own. Um, let me know in the comment section if you want me to even state my opinion. Uh, I'm just going to show you what the issues are with both gimbals, what both gimbals are good at, and which gimbal is better than the other gimbal at a certain feature. Um, so, yeah. Mm. So, okay. Do you have any tips for gimbal hyperlapses? I did a video on it. I did a video on it. Hoeing Farm says the sound from the table. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Shadow says, thanks, Josh. Looking forward to your comparison. Thank you, brother. Raju, hello, brother from India. I see your video and updated my crane too. Awesome, man. Uh, Kalaf says, if it's hot, come to Kuwait. It's 40 at night and sometimes more. <laughs> That's pretty hot. I'm not going to lie. 40 degrees Celsius, I'm assuming, right? Uh, yeah. Cool. Good, really good turnout for this uh, live stream. I'm going to actually, so you guys don't get disappointed. For those of you just tuning in, I'm going to leave both gimbals in the shot here. So you know that I'm talking about them. Now, yeah. you know what? Oh, okay, good. So the Ronin logo is in the shot. So you guys know that I have the Ronin S. Um, but yeah, I'll be right here. <laughs> Smudged between these two gimbals. Um, but yeah. I think that's it, right, guys? Am I missing anything? Let me know. Um, both gimbals are here. Um... And tomorrow is the, the first impression that the Ronin S will have on me. Um, tomorrow's our first date, Ronin S. How do, you, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Are you going to buy me a dinner? That looks like a no. So I'm pretty upset about that. That's a one minus for you. Crane 2, will you buy me dinner? 
Nothing with the oh, like a like a kind of a slow nod, kind of like an unassured nod. But yeah. Um, okay. Nelson says, uh, "Gotta leave now." Great live stream, mate. Look forward to check. Thank you, brother. Same camera lens, you'll be able to set up either gimbal quickly. Yes, definitely take note of that. Uh, make sure that you, uh, all of the axes on both gimbals, make sure that this is, yeah, on both gimbals are marked with rulers. So make sure that you write those down if you want to quickly um, set your gimbal up to the same camera without having to play guessing games. Yeah. I'll, both gimbals have that. Yeah. One thing I wish we had with the Ronin S that the Crane 2 does have is the LCD screen or LED screen. Uh, we get real time data of the battery life. Um, with the battery life on the Ronin S, we see it down here, which is kind of annoying to have to you know, look at it like this. Um, with the Crane 2, I can just look straight into the handle and it'll tell me straight off the bat. Um, what the battery life is like and all that. Also the the modes, right? You have to kind of, it just tells you modes one, two, and three, but you can program those according to your user profiles. Um, so you have to remember what those user profiles are. With the Crane 2, you know exactly what mode you're shooting in because it tells you through this LCD screen. Um, you also have a camera control dial here, record uh, button. Um, I mean, there's just so many features on both of these gimbals. I can't cover that in this video. It's going to have to come out with my first impressions video and my comparison. Actually, my comparison video. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what's going to happen with that. Um, <laughs> Raymond says... Uh, do you do much straight up photography or is your work now mostly video and gimbal centric? Uh, you are a superb YouTuber, by the way. Thank you so much, Raymond. No, I don't do photography, unfortunately. I think I'm a crap photographer, um, but maybe eventually I'll get into photography. I think that'd be a cool thing to pick up. Uh, photography is like a different animal, honestly. VFX says you have approx 12 hours of battery with a Ronin S. There, um, oh, there are four lights, hence three hours per light. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, 25% per light, that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, there's just a few quirks here and there. Overall, man, like the build quality, I have nothing bad to say. Uh, the build quality, DJI nailed it. I mean, both companies did a very good job with build quality. All metal, nothing feels cheap on either gimbal. Um, neither, neither gimbal for, feels cheap. So I'm excited to put them, put the Ronin S through its paces. Uh, I already know what the Crane 2 can do. I don't know what the Ronin S can do yet. So I just have to test it out. VFX says keep them both. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I thought I was strong until the until a five minute tracking shot. And then my back started cramping. My arms started hurting. And I'm just like, oh. But yeah. All right, guys. I love you all so much. I need to get some sleep. Um, I do have a shoot coming up tomorrow. And I will be doing a lot of BTS stuff with the Ronin S. I'm going to put it through its paces. And then by Monday, you will see my official first impressions video of the Ronin S. I'll tell you um, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. A few weeks after that, uh, I'm going to do a full comparison video with the Ronin S and the Crane 2. And there you go. Okay. Um, 
and uh, I think that we're going to have one hell of a good video with both of these gimbals. I, I really do think so. Uh, Gregor says, thank you a lot for this great stream and good luck tomorrow. Thank you so much. Great stream. Your channel is awesome. Keep your reviews coming. Keep your reviews coming. Thank you so much, VFX Todd. I appreciate it, brother. You've always been a very good subscriber and viewer, so I really appreciate that. Um, Raymond says, good man, stay healthy and strong. Thank you guys so much. Um, I appreciate all of you. Much love. Stay tuned for Sunday's live stream. I'll also talk more about the Ronin S and my experience with it. And then Monday, official first impressions uh, video. And then a few weeks until my full comparison between these two monsters. All right, guys, have a good night or day, depending where you are. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Peace. Now the funny part is, is I don't know where the end button is. Ah, there it is. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good night.